Minnesota United take on San Jose Earthquake Saturday, August 1st at 7 p.m. in the MLS is back tournament knockout stage. Big games, Dave, big goals! Tonight's show is brought to you by Allianz. Alina Health, official orthopedic partner of Minnesota United. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota, better together, you and Blue. And M Health Fairview, please protect yourself and others by wearing a mask when in public spaces. We all have to do our part, we're yours, Minnesota. Hello there and welcome to our match recap show. Callum Williams here as always alongside Kindra D. St. Aubin. And after a sterling display in between the pipes from Tyler Miller the other day, we thought we'd get a goalkeeping expert on the show. So joining us today, ex-Celtic legend and now Minnesota United goalkeeping coach, Stuart Kerr joins us. Stuart, how are you doing? I'm very well, guys. Good afternoon to everybody and uh, hopefully this tournament will go on for a bit longer. Yeah, let's hope so. Minnesota United into the quarter-finals after uh, victory on PKs against the crew, which we'll get to in a little bit. Before we dive deep into it, though, Stu, what has life been like for you in the Orlando bubble? I think it's been a very unique experience. Um, I think it's unprecedented times. Um, I think it's very much you take it day by day, um, especially now you're in the knockout stage because you're in the situation where if you lose... You're leaving the next day, so it's quite it's, it's, it's quite unique. It's it's very difficult to plan, um, but as I say, I think it's been a unique experience and it's been enjoyable, and it's been really good at times. Well, you'll be staying there for at least several more days, as we said earlier on. The earthquakes, the opponents in the quarterfinals, Kindred D St Albin. They beat Columbus Crew on penalties, but they got themselves underway inside the opening twenty minutes through Robin Lurd's first goal of the tournament, and he took it very well indeed, didn't he? Yes, he did. And Sue, so we're going to take a look at this finish here by Robin Lou. But talk us through your positioning. If you're viewing this as a goalkeeping coach and you see this ball come in the box, what is the plan there on set pieces for Minnesota United to attack it? But also defensively, what did Columbus crew really get wrong on this positioning? Because it seems like the ball goes to the back post. Robin does his job by heading it back across to create a chance. And Columbus crew just unable to clear it. Well, I think all through the tournament, I think we've been really exceptional on set plays. I think we've been really threatening on that. We looked at Columbus's setup because every team obviously has different setups. We looked at their setup and they're very much a man marking team. A lot of teams will go really zonal, but they like to mark. So if you can get a free run, then it clears up the space. Also, as well, if you look at the goal there, what we did very well is we picked up the second, third balls. And I think that's very important now when you're attacking set plays. I mean, you see a lot of set play goals now. It's all uh, second and, and third phases of play. So for me, I think it's it's a case of being alert. As you see here, it's a great error from Robin at the start there. Jose gets a great flick. And then it's a great finish from Robin. And I think for a defensive point of view for Columbus, I think they'll be disappointed in the fact that they never picked up the second or third ball and were slow to react. Well, and as a goalkeeper, we talked about Andrew Tarbell, you know, not having played basically since September of 2018 prior to the game against Atlanta. How difficult is that for a goalkeeper to come into these situations and these scenarios? I know he played against Atlanta, but just in this tournament, having such a long layoff of actual games. I think it's very, very difficult. I think you've seen in the tournament, especially for goalkeepers, it's been very difficult because even if you see our situation, we never even had an 11 v 11 game before. We started playing in the tournament, so for goalkeepers, you can make saves, but your actual positioning and your actual decision making is something that comes with games. And to be fair to Andrew, I watched him in the, the Atlanta game, and he actually did very well. He made a few good saves. Um, I don't think there was too much he could have done with that goal, but as you say, when you've not played in a while, you're maybe not as sharp as what you can be, and I think we were looking to exploit that. Well, when you look at Minnesota United's next opportunity, they did create some additional chances. And of course, and it, it did come on another set piece opportunity. So the importance and the emphasis and the time spent by Minnesota United on set pieces offensively and defensively. What do you see from this play with that near post flick? And how difficult is that to defend as a back line or as a goalkeeper when it comes in off the near post and off a flick on a header? Well, I think first and foremost, it's the delivery. I think Jan's deliveries in this tournament have been absolutely spot on. Um, and I think if you look at Ethan here, it's especially the Columbus man mark, and it's very difficult when somebody gets a run for the defender to try and match it if you attack it positively. 
And I think Ethan there, he's in that front post area there, and he goes and attacks the ball, and he actually has a great flick. And to be fair, Andrew Tarbell makes a really good sharp reaction save. I think we'll probably have a little bit disappointed. Like the first goal, we could have picked up the second or third ball, maybe sneaked another goal there. But I think it's very, it's very good that we're working so hard in set plays and it's paying off in the actual games. How much is it is just discipline? You have your role on a set piece from an attacking standpoint and you get to the spot that you need to be at. And of course, you talked about the delivery. Jan's been fantastic. But how important is it just to know your role on set pieces and make sure you get to the spot that you're supposed to be at? Oh, I think it's very important. Um, as you said, Jan's delivery has been fantastic. But I think for us, we have players in the team who really attack the ball. And I think that's a big thing. I mean, there's no point in good delivery getting put in the box if you don't attack the ball. And it's very important that you know what areas you're going to go into. Um, and as I say, I think we'll be a little bit disappointed in that one that we never picked up the second or third ball. And we could have, we, we could have went 2 0 up in the game. But as long as we continue a good delivery and attack the ball, I think we'll, we'll score a few more goals from set place. And then the set piece, or I shouldn't say the set piece, but the foul and the goal for Columbus Crew in the second half there. I mean, you know, it's tough for us to look at this opportunity and see what was made of it. I mean, Jose Aja has been tremendous in this tournament. He's stepped right up, and in my opinion at least, and filled in for Ike Opara in a, in a situation that he probably maybe wasn't expecting. This is a late challenge, clearly a foul, clearly a penalty, but what do you attribute to this? Is this just tired, heavy legs at this point? You guys are just exhausted. He's exhausted. I mean, what do you, what do you attribute that that challenge to, and for him in that situation before we get to actually breaking down the penalty? Yeah, I think it's I think it's a situation. I mean, last night's game, I mean, was was, was probably the first game we've played in the tournament where it's been really, really physically, and mentally draining. And I think a lot of players were feeling tired at the end of the game. We've seen a couple of players going down the cramp and stuff like that. Even though it's at night time, it's still very humid. And it's still hot. Um, and and the Jose in the game, I thought, was absolutely outstanding. I think some of his defensive blocks and I mean, his bravery in, in situations, I think there is it's probably a bit of tiredness. And sometimes when you're tired, it's easy just to lunge in instead of staying on your feet. And I think that's just that case. And another day, he might get the ball. Obviously, it was, it was disappointing for us because it's at the time when we're 1 0 up and you want to, to see the last 10 minutes through. But as I say, definitely tiredness there, I think. Um, and I think Cozy would be the first one to admit that. What do you see on the penalty here? Tyler makes the first save. Now, no defender quite close enough to get the rebound um, after he makes that fantastic first save with his left arm. Talk people through the strength it takes for a goalkeeper, first of all, to position yourself and go the right way for a penalty. What, what kind of mindset that takes as a goalkeeper? And second of all, the strength of your arm to be able to keep that initial shot out. Well, I think with, with this particular penalty kick, I mean, Tyler you know, knows Jazzy's RDS quite well because he's been in the, the US national team uh, squad with him. So we've, we've looked at Jazzy's pe uh, penalty kicks, and but Tyler had a notion that he was going to maybe hit it in the middle. So what he did there was he, he, he tried to wait as long as he possibly could and then react to the ball. And for me, I think it's an absolutely unbelievable save because Jazzy hit it really, really well. And Tyler, it's, it's one of those ones he actually gets too good a hand on it. If he actually just clips it with his hand, it goes wide of the post, but his hand is so strong that it puts it back into the area. And I mean, I mean, I don't blame the defenders at all because it comes back so quick and the advantage is always with the attacker. Uh, for me, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big one in this. I don't think the attacker should, allow, should be allowed to take, hit the rebound in again when he misses the penalty, especially when the keeper saves it. I think it should be somebody else that should be allowed to hit it. I don't think that the attacker should be allowed to do it, but that's just my opinion. But. As I say, Tyler had a notion that he was going to go down the middle. And if he didn't go down the middle, then it was just a case of reacting and trying to make the save. And I mean, it was a fantastic save, but it was just unfortunate. It was one of those nights where the ball went straight back to Jazz Jazardes and he put it away. As the night ticked on and the clock ticked on in that 1-1 positioning for Minnesota United, what are your feelings like as a goalkeeping coach, knowing that the, the, the odds are that this is going to penalties and we'll kind of roll through some of the Minnesota ones, which were taken fantastically by everybody on the club. But what is that feeling like as a goalkeeping coach for your goalkeeper and for your penalty taker is knowing that that's the case? Well, I think it's, I mean, we've obviously spoke about it and we've worked on our penalty kicks um, and what we're going to be doing. I think with the, with the penalties, and I think you've seen it in some of the, the, the PK shootouts is, I, I believe that if you give the, the, the goalkeeper too much information, 
I think it's in his head. And I think it's sometimes they dive too early. I think you give them the information and you look at it and you say, OK, the last couple of penalties, this has happened. But then I think it's up to the goalkeeper to try and read the spot kit. I think with Andrew Tarbell, I think he had in his mind where he was going to go at all times. And I think if he looks back on it, he'll think, oh, I could have read that better and maybe done something better with that. Um, but I mean, our penalty kicks were absolutely fantastic. We spoke about it in the huddle before we were going into the penalty kicks. We said, listen, just be positive. If you're going to go at a corner, hit it hard and hit it lower, or you're going to go high, don't be in that middle area where the goalkeeper can save. And I think, as you see, the one Tyler said, uh, saved from Chris Cadden, Chris hit it in that middle area where it's a really good height for the goalkeeper to save. Okay, be honest with me here. When you go into a penalty as a goalkeeper, when you play, what do you what do you really think your percentage is that you're going to make that that save that stop? I mean, the, the shooter has the advantage, right? I mean, how how much of it is a challenge is it? Just a bonus if you make <laughs> if you make the save as a goalkeeper? It's nearly. I just feel like the odds are so stacked against you guys. Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, we've rolled, it's, it's a it's a no lose situation for the goalkeeper because you're not expected to make the save. And as you said there, it's a bonus if you can make the save and all the, all the pressure's on the attacker. So for us, it's just about just trying to be as calm as you possibly can be at the moment. And then depending on what you're going to be doing is making the save. Just if you're going to go one way, go all the way. And I think with, with the save Tyler made from Chris Card, and I think he really attacked the ball. If you see what he did, he actually probably came off his line a little bit in the modern day rule. They're not supposed to now, so... But he got that little bit of advantage when he came and he attacked the ball. So it's a fantastic opportunity for goalkeepers to make a name for themselves. Just wondering uh, as well, Stewie, um, you mentioned it once or twice there. How much preparation and research are you doing as a staff and then perhaps executing that information to the goalkeepers, knowing full well that the game against the crew could go into penalty kicks? Yeah, well, I mean, we have, like, obviously, Sam Lawson does a lot of the, the video stuff. Um, so what we what we have is, is we have like a record of every penalty taker from the Columbus crew. So we had last night, it was nine players, and it was their last, like, uh, how many penalties they've taken. So probably about 90 penalties all in. So what we do is we have it broken down into the goal, and you know exactly where they're going to go. So I had that sheet with me last night, before we're getting the penalty kick, so just to revisit it with Tyler. But the, the biggest thing I said to him was, I says, listen, you've got the information there, but I want you to make your, your own mind up. That's the biggest thing, because when, when, I, when, when I was playing as a goalkeeper, there was times I would kick myself when I was given information, but when I seen the player running up, I knew where, he's go, where he was going to go, but the information was telling me another thing. So I said to Tyler, I said, listen, the information's there. I says, but trust yourself. Trust yourself to make a save and trust your, your intuition. If they're going to run up a certain way, you know they're going to go across their body. So for me, that was the biggest thing. And I think like Tyler, he took the information in, but he also made his own mind up where, where to go. So that was good for him. No doubt he shone against Columbus crew, Tyler Miller. But what have you made of his tournament over the course of the last few weeks, Jim? I think it's been very difficult for him because, as I said before, I think we've never had an 11 v 11 game. So for a goalkeeper, that's very, very, very difficult. When you go into, if you look at the goal he lost against Kansas City, that's a goal where it's, it's a typical one where sometimes you don't really know where you are in the goal because you've not played enough games. You're playing high as a goalkeeper, then you drop back in and you don't know where your position is. So for me, that, 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 that was the one. And I think it's very difficult as well when you make a mistake in your first game for a goalkeeper because then your mindset's differently. You're trying then not to make another mistake, but I thought he did really well against the uh, Salt Lake clean sheet, solid performance. I thought the other night he made, I mean, he probably made the save of the tournament for the header uh, against Colorado. I thought it was absolutely outstanding. The second goal, he was so close to making the save. He was he was blocked off. He got a good touch to it. Hits the underside of the bar and goes in. If it hits the, the bar and goes out, then everybody's talking about it. it's a fantastic save. But for me, he's been getting better in training every day. He's got the games under his belt now, and I think that was a culmination last night because it was the, the penalties for me as a bonus. I, I just thought his all-round play last night was really good. He dealt with a lot of awkward situations. He was very dominant in the air, came and punched a lot of things, good decisions. His handling was excellent. I thought his distribution was really, really good. 
and obviously that's been finished off by the, the penalty saves. But for me, that was his most complete performance. And I think that that bodes well for like when we're for the next game against San Jose because when you move into the knockout rounds, you don't want your goalkeeper to lose the game for you. You know, that's I, the biggest thing for me. The big saves will come, but do the do the, the basic things correctly and then we've got a chance of winning the game. We all saw the celebrations and the videos that were posted after the match and after the win and the, the elation of the guys um, after the penalty kicks. Talk us through a little bit that mental, emotional lift because of this grind, not just from the match, but from the four plus weeks that you guys have been there now. And then the mental grind to be able to stay focused, hit the penalties appropriately, make the saves when you need to. And then just that release almost in the locker room to still find the energy to even celebrate after the grind that you guys have been under. Well, I think that that comes from the manager. I think, I mean, he's his personality and character along with what he's got as a manager tactically and stuff like that is, is, I mean, it comes from him. I mean, he keeps the guys going, keeps them on their toes, you know, he's, he's accessible, he keeps training sharp and bright. And I think in this situation, the situation we're in here at the moment where it's just basically train, eat, sleep, you know, it's repetitive. But the manager's done a fantastic job in mixing things up. And I think that's rubbed off on the boys. But I think right from the start of pre-season, I think there's been a great rapport between the lads. I think that there's a great chemistry between them, atmosphere in the camp. I think that they hold each other accountable, you know, and and they want to do well and they want to win football matches. And I think that's maybe going to separate us from other teams in this bubble. I think it really is. I think when it, when it, when it gets down to it, I think we're a very, very hard team to beat. People, people probably underestimate us at times how hard we are to beat. Um, and I think that team spirit, when you're in a situation like this, will get you through the games, as you've seen with the, the celebrations after the game. You know, it's fantastic stuff. We spoke about it before the game. There's not a better feeling than winning a football match, you know, because it makes the next days easier when you're in this sort of situation. Everybody's, everybody's full of adrenaline. So I think for us, that's the biggest thing. But I think the credit to that goes to the manager. Final question for you, Stu. Um, outside of the Minnesota United realm, um, no doubt about it, the tournament has been extremely entertaining, at least from our point of view as commentators. Um, what have you made of the tournament in itself? Has it been a success in your mind? I think definitely it's been a success. I mean, I think some of the games have been have been crazy, so exciting. You know, but I think that's to do with the fact that people have not played for four months. So there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be crazy things happening. And also the situation you're in, I mean, it's crazy you're, you're, when you're walking around the hotel, you can't even speak to other teams. You just got to wave, but everybody sees each other. Everybody's watching the games at night. Like everybody, you'll sit as a staff every night and we'll sit and watch the two games. You know, sometimes you're not going to bed till about 1.30 in the morning, stuff like that. But it's been, it's been very, very interesting. And I think, I think for MLS, it's been really good. You know, I think it's been, it's, it's been fantastic. And I think, you know, they've, they've done everything to make it possible for us here. It's been really, really good. The set up, everybody feels safe. You know, everything's been put on correctly. And I think it's been a, a, a very worthwhile exercise for the league. Well, Stu Kerb, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, Kindred East St. Auburn, as always, thank you. And thank you to you at home for joining us as well for another match recap show. Remember, for all the latest on Minnesota United down in Orlando, keep it right here on MNUFC.com. Tonight's show is brought to you by Allianz. Alina Health, official orthopaedic partner of Minnesota United. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota, better together, you and Blue. And M Health Fairview, please protect yourself and others by wearing a mask when in public spaces. We all have to do our part, wear yours, Minnesota. Minnesota United take on San Jose Earthquake Saturday, August 1st at 7pm in the MLS is back tournament knockout stage.